Thank you, Ron. Uh, the last two weeks have been very beneficial as far as we, our team is concerned. We've learned a lot, as what you mentioned, the interrogation and so forth, and the uh, training with the raw day working through interpreters. The one point that you can help us with, though, is on this field headquarters there you've got set up. Uh, where we're going, we'll probably be working with decentralized training rather than centralized, and the results you have may help us down there. But, uh, when we go to the other area, I'm afraid that we're going to have a few more problems down there that we don't have here. For example, a different tribe, and plus we're working with two different types of group of people, the Dips and the male tribe. And we can take what you have given us here and then modify it to meet the situation down there. As far as equipment-wise, I think we pretty well got everything you had. Uh, how about uh, lesson plans and uh, training schedules there? Uh, we're okay on that, but we'll probably have to make some changes as our situation goes along. Okay, Van, how about the commo situation? Uh, it's pretty well in hand? Well, we'll try the same system they're using here. If that don't work, we'll change it. The villages of Southeast Asia were old in the days of Julius Caesar. Throughout their long history, they have been regularly conquered, oppressed, liberated, and invaded again. In the best of times, lives here are neither long nor easy. Maybe it's not surprising that the villagers of Vietnam have simple ideas about what makes a friend. Friends are people who help. Medics of a rather special kind are part of a special forces team to care for their own men. But in isolated, often disease-ridden hamlets where no doctor has ever gone, a special forces medic with his extensive specialized training may be the only contact with modern medicine the people will ever have. Okay, uh, I'll give her this script here, write down the medicine and she can pick it up from the inside. The use of military personnel to win friends as well as to fight is gaining ground in Vietnam. A villager is likely to be more interested in a new roof for his house than in the outcome of the Cold War or the threat of communism. The training and advising of Vietnamese civic action teams for work in the villages of Vietnam may be one of our major contributions to the defeat of communism in Southeast Asia. But if good works are an answer to communist propaganda, they're not enough to repel the guerrilla terrorism which invariably follows when propaganda fails. This is the village of Huc Thien, near the coast of the South China Sea. By refusing food and volunteers to Viet Minh guerrillas, these villagers subject themselves to 250 guerrilla attacks in five years. That's an average of one a week. They're about to show an American visitor how they survived. A typical alert, which here is more often real than practice. organized into a small fort. When the alert sounds, every man, woman, and child has either a place to hide or a post to defend. They've defended it so well that guerrilla attacks have virtually ceased. The price of extorting food and supplies has become too big for the guerrillas to pay. And it's worth remembering that they did this all on their own. Americans are now giving them weapons and technical advice. But in this case, we're only making a good thing better, and maybe making life a little easier for a town full of brave people. a stockade fence. Sooner or later you have to take the fight to the enemy, whether he's an army or only a band of guerrillas prowling the surrounding jungle. At a special forces training camp outside Saigon, volunteers from the village of Huc Thien are training to carry their war outside the gates. These training missions can be interesting. 
the jungle is never safe. And when you practice searching for gorillas hiding in jungle villages, you're always liable to find some. In this school, nobody has trouble keeping the students awake. A moment's carelessness can lead to disaster. You don't cross a clearing, pass a temple, or walk through a cemetery without making sure. Natives of the Vietnamese highlands have nothing to learn from Americans about jungle living. But they do need help in mastering the tactics and using the modern weapons which communist trained guerrillas are using against them. Like mountain people everywhere, they are natural soldiers who learn fast. These are men of the Nung Chinese, training at a special forces camp near the town of Da Nang. They are already some of the most experienced anti-guerrilla fighters in Southeast Asia. In 1954, 25 of these same men turned back an assault by 1,000 Viet Minh soldiers, killing 600 in the process. These are mountain people of the Katang tribe. They and their U.S. instructors are drawing rations of dried shrimp and rice for a week-long jungle patrol. A joint training exercise with soldiers of the regular Vietnamese army, it will have the added practical advantage of making life difficult for a battalion of Viet Cong guerrillas who happen to be using the same jungle. The main problem in taking the fight to the guerrillas in Vietnam or anywhere else in Southeast Asia is terrain. Ordinary means of travel are too slow to counter the hit and run tactics of communist guerrillas. One answer to that problem is the helicopter. Helicopters manned by pilots trained to fly at treetop level can bring troops into a guerrilla-occupied area the moment their presence becomes known. The helicopter also increases the staying power of the anti-guerrilla patrols. With fresh supplies of food and medicine available in the heart of the jungle itself, patrols like these can cover a lot of territory, stay until they find what they came for. This gorilla is beginning to learn that there are fewer places to hide in the jungles of Vietnam. Some of the Viet Cong guerrillas are hardcore communists, prepared to die for a cause in which, unfortunately, they sincerely believe.
The Viet Cong also includes men, many of them, who only want an alternative. Men like this young Rade tribesman, who a few days ago deserted the guerrillas and came to a special forces team seeking protection. His name is Trung, 22 years old. How long has he been with the VC? Damlan a dog from Viet Minh. Dog Viet Minh to Amlan, Nansan and Nantua. He has been with the VC two months since January. Why did he join the VC? Sing out like a dog of Viet Minh. Con dog Viet Minh, good as in your map hall. Go, the command now in Ye. He joined VC because VC forced him, pressed him to go in jungle. Why did he desert the VC? Yang nak kelak kelak dua emang Viet Cong. Kau kelak dua emang Viet Cong. Kita kau mau duit kir, kelak kenap nyai. Di cuci cang, kui peran kue. He desert VC because he does not like the life of VC, and he treat badly many people still right and work hard. But why did he come to our specific training area? Sengai cang kere kau boleh nau nai. Kau kere boleh nau nai. Kita kau mau hing. He come here because he know that program in Burning Now is for Rade people and for Rade benefit and he went to work here to help Rade people to have better life. How large was the group of VC that he was with? Dom Chau Pong Viet Minh Bet Hoi. Viet Minh Dong Bet Hoi Pa Plu Chau. 40 people with him. It will be a long while in Vietnam before any swords are beaten into plowshares. But the time will come. What the people want is peace. Peace and a chance for a better life. The communist Viet Cong promises them progress. But in the meantime, creates a world where peaceful citizens must go armed in fear of their lives. What the Viet Cong guerrilla really wants is power. What he can't control, he tries to destroy. In South Vietnam, the old promises don't work as well as they used to. And so the guerrilla resorts more and more to terrorism. Is at war with his own people. The Vietnamese are an ancient race and an independent one. This is not the first time they've fought for the right to decide their own destiny. For 2,000 years, they've defended that right against all the emperors of China, against the cavalry of Kublai Khan, against modern armies using machine guns and airplanes. Given time, they will send today's would-be oppressors to join the others in defeat. Our purpose in Vietnam is to give them that time. <laughs>